Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. Hey, what's going on YouTube and Facebook? This is the brain of the mainframe here, Niall Scott with Pop XP with an exciting episode tonight. But most importantly, I am honored to share the screen tonight with the true brain. I mean, I'm just, it's, I'm plagiarizing that name because the true brain is sitting here next to me, Mr. JC Vaughn. JC, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Niall, I am, I'm good this night. It's good been a week time. where I couldn't say that. <laughs> I feel like yeah. So it's only great. a couple great. hours ago you couldn't say that. Ah, uh, yeah, literally a couple hours ago I could not say that, and I'm I'm excited to be able to say it now. And uh, when we are done, I I shall collapse in a pile of goo. But in the meantime, I am excited to be here tonight. Uh, our friends at American Mythology have a new product that we are happy to talk about. We've got three great creators here to go over it with. Yes, and, and I'm pretty excited because, uh, you, you know, the, the property that we're discussing tonight is is huge, you know, and as a YouTuber, I mean, it's well known to be one of the most popular uh, YouTube shows out there with, with a crazy amount of subscribers. It really grew that way and then obviously adapted to some other forms of media, such as the comics, which we're going to discuss tonight. So I'm really looking forward to that. So without further ado, Mr. JC Vaughn, shall we introduce our guests? Absolutely. First up, we've got Mr. Dean Rankin. Dean, welcome. Hello, Dean. Well, to the Australian thing. G'day. G'day from Australia, Melbourne, Australia, where I'm coming to you, to you from the future. It's uh, Friday morning here. I don't, what are I, the lottery numbers from last night? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. And we've also got Mr. Jordan Gershowitz. Jordan, hey, everybody. welcome. Hey, thanks for having me and, and all of us from American Welcome. Mythology. Appreciate it. Thank you. And the one and thus far only Mr. S.A. Check. Welcome, sir. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to talking about our project with Augie and the Cockroaches and everything we have going on over at American Mythology. Awesome. And we're so happy to have you guys. Uh, I was so excited when I got the phone call uh, about this because we actually, just so you guys know, Frank Amazing, who's one of our producers, puts lists together and he sends them to me of projects that he's found that he's interested in. And I create a list as well. And we both had this project on the list to reach out to, to see if we could get the creators of the book or who are working on the book to come onto the show. And then I was fortunate enough that I actually received a phone call from Jim saying hey let's uh you know you want to get these guys on i heard i was like yeah heck yeah let's do this and here you guys are so this is incredible i'm excited for this and uh think, you know i think it's really cool because uh, niall you touched on it already this is a youtube phenomenon and something that's grown into other media and thus far the comic's been a little bit of a sleeper and so here's a chance for a lot of people to find out about it and see what you guys are up to exactly i was just about to say that exact words well, that's that's because I pull your script. <laughs> well, uh, let's get into a little bit of an introduction for our viewers out there that may not be uh, familiar with your work, or they are familiar with your work, but some of the other things you haven't done. So, Dean, if you can, just uh, kind of give us a bit of your origin story and what you've been working on the past few years. Yeah, so my name is Dean Rankin, and I'm a comic book artist and writer, and I've worked on uh, The Simpsons and Futurama for Bongo. I've worked on a, a issue of Scotty Young's I Hate Fairyland. I've done a Rick and Morty Invader Zim for Zoni. On Oni, I did a um, a short of a Lobster Johnson story, the Hellboy book for Dark Horse, um, and lots of other stuff. Yeah, I've been going for uh, twenty. I don't know, a long time anyway. Mm -hmm. Great comment from TJ there. I uh, uh, I proofed. I didn't really edit the Zorro book, but uh, I contributed one piece. Uh, uh, we had uh, Kaluta do a, a Zorro cover for the Price Guide last year, mm. and uh, that was in there. And it's oh boy, is that a gorgeous piece! But that book is wonderful, TJ. Thanks for mentioning it. Now, Dean, I'm familiar with your work, uh, especially with the Mongo comics, doing a lot of Simpson stuff. I'm a huge Simpson fan. I mm. think I have all all of the the, the regular run and some of the one offs and things like that. Doing the Simpsons books, I have to ask: Do they send you? 
like a whole like character design packet to make sure that you're drawing them right? Or do you just go in and you just draw them and make them look perfect? Yeah, no, the and if you see my earlier stuff, like they really, really don't look perfect. The um, <laughs> and I thought that that would be very heavy on that, but I've got a, a how to draw a Simpsons book mm -hmm. that I referred to, and there's all this stuff on the internet you can look up as well, like little uh idiosyncrasies about like say the character snake what his license plate is mm -hmm. because of the fandom there's all this really cool stuff that you can actually dig out uh so yeah they were always working for bongo were really cool they never asked me to be more on model that's just something i kind of worked towards over the years because my thinking was the more on model you can be the more opportunity there is to work so uh yeah they were very chill there was never you know specific colors i had to use mm -hmm. or anything like that and another property that you worked on is your own create your own i believe which is the uh rainbow pick uh the itty bitty bunnies <laughs> rainbow pixie the candy pixie land candy. so that's about naked drug using bunny rabbits <laughs> uh, um, surprisingly not for kids um so that was um yeah that was a lot of fun i worked on that for uh it was uh create our own book out through action lab and um, i got an award for it here in australia there's a thing called the ledger awards for working on comics and uh yeah some someone liked that and i got an award for it so it was a uh, fun to do that's Stupid, cool ridiculous stories yeah if, can that book can people still get that book oh uh, yeah i believe so i think you could like pick up if you want the uh, trade you could get it from book depository and certainly on comicology if you want to read it digitally it's kind of mm -hmm. embarrassing but yeah it's out there uh, it's it's pretty cool man i was checking it out and it's pretty trippy i like it <laughs> yeah it's really out there <laughs> and i don't know i think i have a suspicion i don't know how i got to work with scotty young but i have a suspicion that he might have seen that book mm -hmm. and that's why i got to draw an issue of uh, i hate fairyland because there's some um, similarities between the two yeah now did he reach out to you for that yeah, he sent me a friend request. Oh, nice. Scotty Young was sending me a friend request. <laughs> um, and because he was right, like he was writing and doing so much, I think like every fourth book in that series, he would get like a guest artist to do something on. Mm -hmm. So I did a, it was a, kind of a, a fantasy version of what would happen if Larry the Fly hadn't met Gert, but, um, so that was really cool. I've had some nice opportunities. And that okay, was what's, okay, I saw it flash up there. What's the title of the book again? Oh, let me bring this up here for you. Itty Bitty Bunnies, Rainbow Pixie Candyland. Yeah. Oh, yeah Bunny... That's the one you told me you were reading to your kids. Yes, they loved it. <laughs> they loved it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah, not okay. I've, uh, I left, I've, left, I've let my 18-year-old read it now, and that's the first time she's read it. I'd have to hide the screen every time they came into the room. So, yeah, not, not the kids. Yeah. The, and yeah. you got to work on Hellboy, too. That's pretty yeah, cool. so, so the um, I so look, there's my name down the bottom, but look, there's Mike Nolas up the top. So that's how close I was. So uh, it was actually <laughs> a, um, a Lobster Johnson. What did he do? Yes. Like, Who's um, Mike Nolas? Who is that? I don't never know heard that. of him. Get a so, job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so i got to draw a uh, it was a backup story of lobster johnson hmm. because i'm I've, I've got such a cartoony style there's only certain books i can work on you know hmm. so and so it was very much a, a a cartoony version of that property very cool man it's a great right. career great career and you guys you know you guys should really check out some of the books that dean's worked on it's incredible his art's incredible and uh he really captures a lot of you know like the simpsons i mean he gets it he nails it um, I've seen the Rick and Morty work, all the stuff you've done, which is just fantastic. So if you haven't checked out Dean's work, I suggest you get online, check it out and start buying some of the books. And uh, Scott, I had yeah. after, you know, I, I, we've actually been friends on Facebook. I, I've seen, I know some about some of your comics and stuff, but then I really, I dove into you, man. And I had to call a lifeguard because you have so much stuff that you've got a whole website. It's a shallow pool. It's a shallow pool. Of, yeah, for shallow pool. What are you talking about? Now, everyone, before he goes in, it, you know, and you guys, please check out. Head on over to um, www.sacheck.com. All of his works are on here. He's got so many great things, novels, comics, everything. So much great stuff on here. Um, 
so cool. Just a, I mean, what a range, what a spectrum of work, man. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. But let me, uh, let me, let me let you talk about yourself. Thanks. Tell us a bit about you know what you what you've been doing. Right. I, I, I like to, you know, I dabble in a little bit of both, so, you know, probably like the majority of everyone here on the panel. You know, we, we grew up in a certain spectrum of sci fi and comics and, and entertainment that uh, uh, got us through our formative years and, and moving through that. Uh, I've done some work with novels and I, I've uh, with some prose with the uh, range. Uh, I've done some young adult novels, some sci fi novels, uh, some blends of science fiction and fantasy books. Uh, my latest uh, two books, uh, Legend Gary, uh, was the young adult novel, and I did a horror book uh, through Necro Publications. They're an indie publisher that's been around for about 20 years and have a, a really amazing reputation. Uh, Monkey Farm, that's the latest book, and, and that's uh, a blend of horror and science fiction, which with a lot of my novels, I think that's where I find myself uh, working. Uh, and I think everything's really a blend, but uh, I've always found it enjoyable to blend genres as much as I can because that's what interests me. Uh, so that's really my work with novels. Uh, mm -hmm. With comics, uh, I've been lucky enough to work with American Mythology for the last, oh, going on five years. And uh, we've done some great books. Uh, we've done some dream projects, some projects that I never thought I would ever be able to associate my name with. Uh, we've worked with the Three Stooges and C3 Entertainment. Uh, we've been putting out books with them for four years. Uh, we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but in 2021, we'll be back with more Stooge books, which is a pretty exciting announcement for me. Uh, that has been a dream project to work on. What writer doesn't want to work on a Three Stooges project, especially anyone uh, interested in any kind of comedy? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm just going and going. Uh, how long is the show? <laughs> oh, keep, keep going. I've, I'm going to have a couple <laughs> questions for you shortly. We, uh, we picked up and worked with uh, uh, Laurel and Hardy uh, with Larry Harmon Productions uh, within the last couple of years. So not only did I get to work on books like The Three Stooges, we also got to do uh, work with uh, them on, uh, we've done what, four, maybe five Laurel and Hardy projects now. Um, we got to do a Laurel and Hardy meets The Three Stooges crossover which was an amazing project. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's one of those once in a lifetime kind of projects to come along that actually myself and uh, Jim Cahork, uh, we did the main story there and that was, that was a fantastic project to work on. I've worked on the Casper comics. We've worked on Pink Panther. Uh, we've worked with uh, some horror projects. Uh, I, I seem to be uh, the fill-in guy for a lot of books, which I'm okay with. Uh, we've done uh, JC and I. He let me work and play in his sandbox for a bit with Stargate Atlantis when they did the Atlantis Universe crossovers, which was, mm -hmm. again, a ton of fun. Uh, we've done some horror work with Hatchet Comics. And obviously now we have Augie and the Cockroaches, which we're incredibly excited about. It's a major, major uh, like you said, YouTube sensation. It's been around for 20 years. It's known the world over. Uh, and we were the first to bring it to comic form. So we're ex extremely excited about working on that. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, man. Now, let me ask you, because you brought up something really cool. And uh, um, well, first and foremost, we got Paul Jenkins in the chat here. Uh, Wolverine Origins uh, writer, you know, worked with uh, Inhumans. Kevin and them. Inhumans. I mean, Amazing, amazing writer, great friend of ours. Um, popped in, he loves Augie and the cockroaches. But I got a question for you because you know, I'm a huge fan of Laurel and Hardy, I'm a huge fan of Three Stooges. Sure. How do you write comedy <laughs> cartoons for the 21st century with IPs, you know, that date back, you know? To, to, you know, when, so the 20s, 30s, yeah, you know, I, things I really like want, that. I really want to hear Scott's approach on this, too. I've done one of these Stooges, and I want to, <clears throat> I want to hear what he says, because he's done a ton of them. Sure. I, I think it's just staying true to the character, and it's finding what made the characters work so well, Their, the, the chemistry that, that the three Stooges had between them. I think that's timeless. Now, we've set stories in the Three Stooges era. We've set stories where we 
brought them into more modern settings. But I think what always was the same, what always held fast, was we, we stay true to the comedy. We stay true to the characters. Uh, and I think that's what fans enjoy. Uh, and and we went to conventions, and, and usually it's a, a current Three Stooges, Stooges fan that uh, has a young child with them that they introduced them to the books. But but the kids pick up on, on the comedy that's there. Uh, it's intimidating at first. When you start writing for the Three Stooges, you're like, wow, I'm writing for the Three <laughs> characters. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to mess this up. Uh, but it, it, it's, you know, what other job can you have that you're watching Three Stooges uh, shorts and, uh, you know, you can look. Yeah. And, I'm doing research, you know. When my wife, <laughs> you know, she thought, but the, the grass probably needs cut honey. I, I'm in the middle of like three hours of research. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is very course. important. Cut it yourself. <laughs> I I think that's the I think that's the, I think that's the greatest thing, you know. My uh, my nephew uh, has discovered that when Rosina and I eat and then sit around, we will inevitably drop off to sleep on the sofa. <laughs> and so I'll look at him. And I'll say, "Did I fall asleep?" And he'll go, "Me, me, 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 me." <laughs> <laughs> My dad would always wake us up with "Wake up and go to sleep." I mean, that was just like if we would ever fall asleep on the couch, that would be what he said. You know, knock us around and then be like, "Get upstairs, go, go to bed." So, yeah. I mean, that yeah. was always something that, uh, you know, I've got, that, that's always been instilled in me. Jordan, yeah. I think that that's great, and I've got a couple more questions for Scott, but let's get around to introducing Jordan. Yes, Jordan, please. Oh, hey, I'm Jordan. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Uh, primarily a, a television writer. I've written for uh, everybody from Nickelodeon to DreamWorks to Disney. Um, classic properties like Tom and Jerry, Danger Mouse, uh, just recently the 50th season of Sesame Street. Uh, oh, did wow. some Where's Waldo for DreamWorks as well. Um, and then comics for me has become uh, pretty newer, uh, to be honest. Uh, I started with American Mythology with uh, Laurel and Hardy. So that was an awesome uh, first entry into professional comics world. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, coming right on to Augie and getting to use my uh, Tom and Jerry chops, if you will. Um, so that was a blast. And I, I love this. Uh, the trade paperback that's coming out. I mean, as a as a consumer of comics myself, I know some people will probably get mad at me, but I love the trades. You know, I just love the value that you get for it, mm -hmm. and the fact that you know, oftentimes you get a complete storyline or a story arc in one book. So I feel like people are really going to enjoy the fact that there's going to be multiple uh, stories that they'll be able to read in, in this new Kickstarter project that we have that's out now. Um, and, and then it's just ultimately a longer read. So, you know, for your kids or even for yourself, you feel like you're getting a lot of great uh, value for it. You know, a lot of great stories there. Now, let me ask you, so you said you're doing a lot of television writing and stuff. I mean, um, how did, how did you get into television writing and then transition to comics? Yeah, uh, I mean, I feel like I've, I've always been on the TV film side. I've started my career mm -hmm. um, as a page at NBC. And before that, I interned at Warner Brothers and MTV. Um, at Warner Brothers, I was reading uh, scripts and analyzing scripts uh, on the Warners a lot. And so from there, I became a page at NBC and then was working in the development side of the business for a long time. Um, and then eventually got hired to be a staff writer um, for Nickelodeon uh, yeah. on a show called Welcome to the Wayne. And yeah. uh, was a part of the first season for that. Um, and then from there, it was kind of all pedal to the metal, all things, uh, kids and family animation. Um, and then, you know, really animated television and comics are very, very similar. We're writing for an artist who's then going to storyboard it. And then mm -hmm. the difference is really, you know, in my opinion, uh, in animation, you know, we're animating the storyboards and, and here in comics, they're kind of the final piece. 
So it, it yeah. had a lot of similar transferable skills, even though the scripts themselves are in different formats. But I mean, in the end, story is story and character is character. So it felt like uh, if you can write a great story in one medium, you know, I'm sure as, as Scott and Dean can both attest, whether it's books, you know, novels or comics or television or any type of property, in the end, you're still focusing on on making a compelling story with with compelling characters. Absolutely. Jordan, it's interesting when I like drawing your script, particularly I can see um, I could feel this or the animation background <laughs> with it, like a lot of the sort of movements and uh the the payoffs was very sort of animation based i thought that was interesting too yeah i think that yeah. was the hardest part that's that was probably the the biggest learning curve for me going from tv to uh to comics right when i was doing especially like the very first laurel and hardy that that scott and i did um especially something like Augie, like laurel and hardy like three stooges mm -hmm. it's it's such a frenetic you know, it's movement, mm. um, you know? And so like in order to get the gag of something going up in the air and falling down, visually, when you wanna see it, uh, when it's moving, you like the fact that it's coming up and it can hang in the air and it can come down because that's where the laugh is from the anticipation and the payoff. And mm. you don't have that kinetic energy as much mm. in, in comics. Um, so the fact that, you know, you're really thinking about how you're going to write this and where the end motions are that you want it to be. And, and obviously a lot of that comes from collaborating with somebody as great as Dean on Augie or, or Jorge uh, on Laurel and Hardy, that they're able to take what I'm writing and really then show it in a visual sense. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you find that, that your, your learning curve on that went away pretty quickly? Like you got you got used to the comic form, yeah. I think once once I kind of did one, and really, I mean, I'm also just I love to educate myself as much as possible. So as soon as I knew that I was gonna do some comic book writing, I really just dove into as many comic scripts as I could to see <laughs> everybody's and how they wrote theirs, what their kind of format was, what their pacing was, just picking up any mm -hmm. little trick. You know, something as simple as, hey, we want to end the page with a literal page turner so that somebody is going. That's not something that we necessarily think about in animation. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. We have different story beats that we're looking to hit at certain minute marks, but we're not doing it in the sense of, okay, at the end of this page, we need to dot, dot, dot so that we turn the page or the action is, is going off the page uh, to make us, you know, mentally want to see what's coming next. So just little things like that I started to pick up and you know keep in my little notebook of all the, the things that I liked about different writers. Um, and especially studying, for those that are interested in writing comics, I was really studying the actual scripts themselves rather than mm -hmm. the finished product because there is such a collaboration. Uh, and I think what some people don't always realize is, right, you write it, then the artist will draw it. And then oftentimes I'll, we'll go back and maybe tweak the writing another time to just really make sure that what we're writing is fitting with what the art is in the end. Yeah, the, the dialogue the dialogue process is the comic book equivalent of we'll, we'll fix that in post-production. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I, it, it, it absolutely is. It's really, it's really interesting. The uh, frequent, uh, frequent contributor here on Pop XP, Steve Peros, uh, a great screenwriter, wrote Cat's Meow, uh, and I was editing uh, his graphic novel Stoker and Wells, and the first the first half of the book was a lot of going back and forth of saying six panels, not one panel. And but boy, you could tell when it, we when he got it, it was like click click click. It was yeah. it was really good. And now he's co-writing She with Billy Tucci. So and I mean and doing a great job of it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, and, and the artists are such a, you know, a huge factor in the stories, right? Because it's it's something that's in your head when you're writing it and it's just words. But there are often times <clears> where, you know, I, lo I love the collaborative process, right? Where where if I'm writing that the, it's only five panels, but Dean thinks it should be seven, or he thinks we can condense it to four. Like, I always write, like, I feel like at the top of every script, like, you as the artist, please, you know, do what you feel like. Feel, you know what what feels right because 
uh, you know, again, I'll come back and I'll tweak. Well, in Augie, there's not really any dialogue, but at the same time, you know, with the sound effects or whatever it is, we can always adjust it in the end uh, to best fit the imagery because in the end, I mean, as much as I want to think that, you know, the writer is the end all be all in anything that we do. Yeah, you know, it's a very visual medium and so is animation. And so mm-hmm. our job is to really serve the the images uh, because that's what, you know, people are really going to gravitate towards. Yeah, does it, yeah. does it serve story? Dean, what do you think it is animation wise that comes through that you said that sense of motion that comes through in in Jordan's script. Yeah, I, 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 it's hard to say, but I think it was things like like uh, Oggy hits wall, turns into like a, uh, 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 you know, piano accordion kind of movement, and there was lots of stuff like that. I have done some storyboarding in animation before as well, and it just had that kind of feel to the the movement of it. it the pacing seemed very yeah animation a, kind of thing yeah, that, and, that's a, that, uh, that sounds that sounds like a really really good explanation scott we've worked with some of the same artists particularly the frames on three stooges absolutely did you get to the point where when you wrote something you knew what they were gonna, how it was going to look when they did it oh absolutely uh, uh, when, when you have the the chance and, and the opportunity to work with the same artist on multiple issues you, you definitely you develop a relationship with them that that uh, after a few scripts you start to get a sense of where they're going to go with it and what you need to add and what you don't need to add and what you know that they'll add into it uh, and that that's that's a great that's a great relationship to be in when you're doing a comic and with Dean Dean does an awesome job with any story he's ever illustrated. Uh, for me, uh, as well as his own stories, and and there's really there there it takes a while. It takes some back and forth, and, and Dean's made suggestions to me when he's done stories. You know, this is going to work better visually, and yeah, you're 100 percent right, and mm-hmm. and that's the way it should be. And and it takes it takes a couple issues, and it takes working with someone multiple times to to even start to get that that uh, reciprocal relationship. Yeah. And I but think my, what Dean my comment for one moment. I just want to say to Scott, poor Scott. I sent him so many notes about a one of his scripts recently. Oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. But now I'm working on your current one that you sent me, and it's it's perfect. You know, they are just. <laughs> now, okay, hang, I, on, I, hang, hang on. We've got we've got to pause a second. Scott, it, get done. out your cal- get out your calendar and write this day down. <laughs> the artist told one of us our script was perfect. <laughs> well, okay, you know, okay. There's some small changes that I've made, but the, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, truth. Yeah, but I, but I think some, uh, particularly with Oggy, I find that um, oh, we've lost him now. I particularly with Oggy, I find that um, uh, you, clarity is so important. Mm-hmm. Because there's there's really there's pretty pretty much no dialogue, so you have to make sure every kind of panel tells that sort of story clearly. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it's been a bit of a journey, and um, I, I, and found I think it- that was the biggest challenge mm. to what Dean was saying. Right, is like you want to show Augie hit the wall and then be an accordion and go in and out and in and out. But and you can't, you can't, can't I mean, how do you show all of that in one panel yeah. or even two panels, right? Because that's, for me, if I'm doing Tom and Jerry, that's what, you know, we've been conditioned that's, to do. Is, that's, the pun- that's the punchline for it, right? Right. And yet and so, in comics, we've got that thing that other mediums don't have, and that is so much of the action goes on in the reader's head mm-hmm. between the panels. Exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a and also a, the nice thing is in that you have in comics that I really enjoy is that the pacing is really up to the reader as well. So if they yeah. really want to, you know, for us, right, a standard Tom and Jerry is seven mm-hmm. minutes uh, or, you know, like a SpongeBob type show is 11 minutes. So you're constrained by that time frame. And mm-hmm. when you are writing a comic, you obviously are still constrained by panel count, page count, all of those things. But just the way that the pacing of the story works also, you do have to keep in mind how the reader is going to uh, see it because they're in the driver's seat. You know, they're not as uh, passive as they might be when they're just watching a TV show where they're 
looking at their phone or doing anything else and it's just playing in the background. That's a really that's a really good observation. Do you looking at the differences between the medium uh, mediums? Do you do anything in your scripts to take any control of that to slow a reader down to make them savor the experience a bit, or do you or is it just how it flows? Uh, it depends. I think every story is a little bit different. Uh, I think the one thing the big difference is is that I overwrite in comics, which was something that I also had to uh, get used to. Right, because I'm so used to being told and just and telling writers if I'm the head writer on a show, you know, more more white space. You know, we want to mm -hmm. see a little less, and at the same time, it, you know, where it also becomes symbi or symbiotic, similar to comics, is we also want oftentimes for those board artists, those artists on the animated shows, to get the opportunity to play around a little bit. So if I write an eighth of a page, that's a car chase sequence. Or if somebody's writing a Batman action fight sequence with the Joker, we don't tend to write for the TV side of things. You know, we, we uh, it might be, you know, weaving throughout the city, you know, dodging this or that kind of giving the, the broad scope of things. And then we might throw a gag in two in. But then the board artists are taking it, uh, you know, much further oftentimes. And that's just only enhancing the project. And mm -hmm. I felt like when it came to the comics, it was important that I couldn't just say they weave in and out. You know, I had to give a little bit more uh, geography to what, what was going on and a little bit more uh, description to just kind of, you know, the second issue there in the grocery store, right? A little bit more on the placement on where the aisles are and what's on the aisles and is something falling down? You know, all of those types of things is in one panel because a lot has to happen in order for us to get to the next sequence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Dean, when you're working with a writer, um, do, you, do you, after a few issues, develop a shorthand where they can give you less and they're giving you more? Or, or do you prefer to have a ton of information and then select from it? Mm. I, sometimes I think it's it's, it, it really depends. I think if the writer doesn't put it in the description, then I don't know they want it. So that I think that's really important. But at the same time, you don't. There's only so much you can put into a panel, and <laughs> and, I, and I think that's you know I spend a lot of time going. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that um, because too much is trying to go on or trying to solve that puzzle of what can I put into this panel to give the impression of what the writer wants. So, um, yeah, so it is a, ultimately you want the best story you can. So I do try to take the ego out of it and what's the, uh, you know, what's the, uh, you know, what helps the reader to understand what's happening, what makes this funny, that type of thing. Excellent. Welcome back, no. Scott. I Thanks. A little that, bit of rolling that, thunderstorms in southwestern PA, so <laughs> we can keep a, we can keep a connection with Australia, but Pennsylvania not so much. <laughs> well, well it's out day, there. Wait, it is daytime there. That's yeah, true. that's right. True. This is true. And, it's a, and I'm still waiting for my lottery numbers, but we'll bring that back up later. <laughs> Uh, so for those out there, uh, you know, Augie and the Cockroaches new graphic novel and comic book is live on Kickstarter right now. Uh, they've met goal. They're continuing to, to, to build up backers. Uh, 12 days to go. Again, this is a YouTube sensation. They're hilarious cartoons. They're freaking hilarious. I have to tell you, it's I'm a huge fan of Ren and Stimpy. There's, there's some of that influence in the animation style of this, uh, some of the close-ups things they do. I mean, it's, it's really entertaining. And I have to say, it's very entertaining in the fact that, you know, there's really no dialogue. It's all just physical comedy, which is incredibly hard. Nile, do, do we have any uh, sample images we can show? We do. This? Yep, that's going to be next after. I'm just going to scroll through here so that everyone knows that they can back this up. Now, this campaign comes with three, three books, correct? Yes, Gentlemen? three issues. Three issues. So you're getting three issues of Augie and the Cockroaches. You guys awake? No, I'm <laughs> shook. Um, we got three issues. Uh, I let Scott through all that, yeah, the, the, the housekeeping stuff. There you go. <laughs> and then one thing I want to touch base on, too, is uh, 
how did how did all three of you even get involved with this? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Well, for me, as soon as uh, we caught wind that Augie and the Cockroaches was uh, a possible project, I, I had no problem raising my hand in the front row to say I wanted involved because I was familiar with the property. And and this is something, I mean, it's it, it's it's so relevant and it's, you know, and Jordan and I had talked about this last week, you know, we talked about the Three Stooges and we talked about physical comedy and we talked about mm -hmm. Laurel and Hardy. And, and characters like the Pink Panther and, and Augie and the Cockroaches is really just the latest rendition uh, of, of that same brand of comedy. It, it's physical comedy. It's visual. Uh, and and it, it takes uh, a special approach when, when you come towards silent characters, uh, especially when you're doing such a visual media as comics. So it, it was a no brainer for me. That's, yeah. a that's a really that's a really good observation, Scott. Did you ever like see a comic book story by another creative team that you looked at and suddenly it was so good that you had to go do something not 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 in that character or similar, but just like you had to go do something all ages or you had to go do something in horror just because you saw something that was so so great that inspired you. Did he freeze again? It looks I like thought, it. I thought that was my job on this show. <laughs> You're pro you are frozen bald guys, so I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. We'll leave that question on the table and go go to Jordan. How do you get involved with Augie? Yeah, I mean, I think it was I was working with, with Scott and Jim and the team at American Mythology on Laurel and Hardy. We had just done the second issue of Laurel and Hardy. And that was when they came to me and said, hey, well, one, we like what you're doing on Laurel and Hardy, so that's always a good thing. Um, and two, uh, they knew my background from Tom and Jerry, and obviously this has a lot of similarities to it, um, as well as another show that I did um, for Boomerang, which is like uh, part of the Warner Media family. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a show called Taffy, which airs mostly, I think, uh, internationally. And that's a show about... Uh, a raccoon who uh, disguises themselves as a cat by wearing a bow tie or a ribbon. And so when they wear the ribbon, they look like a, a kitty cat and they, uh, you know, are able to then infiltrate a, uh, a palatial mansion that has, you know, all the comforts and uh, all the food they can eat. But there's the dog that lives there that knows that this raccoon is, is full of it. And so he's always, uh, Bentley is the dog, and he's always trying to snatch the bow from Taffy uh, to out him. And so, again, very, very physical comedy, you know, always coming up with the stories and the premises. And there is dialogue in that show, but it is always rooted first in kind of, okay, what is really great from a visual perspective? And that's how... You know, I write Augie is what's a great uh, scenario that we can put them in that will give us a lot of visual comedy. Um, and it's something, honestly, that I've brought to my animation writing as well. Uh, once we will do a script, you know, uh, and right before we lock it to go to the board artist, the thing that I do is I like to call it the Tom and Jerry pass, but we can also call it the Augie and the Cockroaches pass in the sense of, I take a look at the script and I solely look at how can I pump this up from a visual perspective, um, you know, to try to plus it up that much more. Because again, animation, just like comics, is a very visual medium. So uh, yeah, it's something that I've taken from the comic side and also from the Tom and Jerry side of things and then applied it to some of the other cartoon writing that I've done. Yeah, yeah. everything you just said makes a lot of sense to me. I. I saw uh, the pencil stage uh, of S.L. Gallant's Pink Panther free comic book day issue for American mythology before MGM screwed with it. Uh, and it, it was so stunning and so wonderful and so Chuck Jones in, in terms of animation that I went out and wrote my, I wrote, I wrote, I mean, literally I wrote a three, three stooges story and sent it to Jim Kohorik without him asking. Because <laughs> I, I was just that jazzed about, about 
what you could do with all ages comics and, and the, the the bombastic nature of it. And I think your Tom and Jerry example is actually even way better. But it was what can you do with that frenetic visual action? And at the same time, I enjoyed the challenge of capturing the characters. But it's it's uh, it's really cool. Niall, is this the uh, is this a look inside the book? Yeah. So this is a look inside the book, uh, which was generously sent to us to uh, preview on here for you guys. So this is uh, issue one of Augie and the Cockroaches. And what's what's great about this is is like you said. I mean. You said, Jordan, you mentioned, you know, it's like, you know, comics is basically taking your script and storyboard and then just bringing that storyboard to life, right, um, without the animation. And and you see that perfectly here. Like, this, A, it, you, you follow the flow like a comic, but then it's almost like a flip book in your mind, right, because it flows like animation. Like, literally, we're three panels in and I can see that. Yeah. Uh, that's great. And Dean, and, this... And, uh, you did this you did both stories in this issue yeah uh, pencils and inks are mine yes yeah so i mean this page right here that you're on i mean this is like a perfect example right where mm -hmm. he's screaming and he's screaming so much that the this you know the skeleton is literally leaping out of his body and that's not something that i mean from animation it's such like a a, a easy thing i feel like to visually see and when I was writing this page in particular, you're like, boy, how is this going to look? Because like you said, it is a flip book. It yeah. is, you know, and that's often now the way that I look at those things is, is almost like you are animating it in some of these newer uh, programs in which you kind of have your first movement to your second and your third. So you're not doing kind of the classic Walt Disney animation where you're necessarily writing or stop motion where you're moving here to here to here to here you're able to take a little bit of a bigger leap but your mind or the computer for animation is filling in the kind of the rest of the movement but since mm -hmm. we've kind of been trained on that new style it's a little bit easier to then kind of put your anchor points of the big moments so you have you know scream it starts to come out it's out and then it's back in this is this is just great stuff and i hope everybody will go over to kickstarter and support this this is really this is tremendous yeah. stuff. Well, we've got uh, Paul Jenkins, uh, huge fan. Says, "All right, I just backed the book, and I will push it on my social media right now." Good Paul, luck, guys. Thank you Paul. so much, man. And yeah, Paul did. You. It's up. It's up on Twitter right now. He's actually he's already posted about it. Uh, Sasgal one, hi Dean, have backed this project. Fantastic. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's so I mean, cool. And I mean, Dean, you're so freaking talented. And, and, you know, my heart belongs to animation. And just to, it's so cool when I get to see my, you know, favorite cartoons or even if I'm not like hugely into something, but I respect the style and I respect what those creators do. The fact that you capture it just, I mean, it's exactly what the, vi what the, what the videos look like. Yeah. You know, the I really consider my, yeah. I really consider myself like an, a lazy animator. Because like the Saturday morning cartoons were my jam, and this is like I'm heavily influenced from animation, so this is such a nice mix for me to work on these kind of properties. Yeah, it shows. I mean, this is I mean, this is fun stuff, man. There's and the yeah, there's the one where he's talking about the uh, the accordion kind of that one where he's yeah, just the, about door. the accordion one. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. And you know, it's funny is, you know, we were just sort of moving past that. And I knew immediately that's what you were talking about. Mm. That's great. Yeah. Now, I mean, how how difficult is it? Is it easier to write a script for a comic book that actually has dialogue versus one that's heavily on the description of the scenes? How like how does that even work, Jordan? It There are I mean, there are always, you know, pluses and minuses to both. You know, when you are doing something like a Laurel and Hardy, which feels like a natural companion to this just because of the physicality of the characters. Um, but you are able to have dialogue. There are things that obviously you're able to do to cheat a little bit, which is nice, right? You can do the, I'm, I'm flying or look over there, or you can draw the reader's eyes with the words in the dialogue to say, hey, look at that duck, <laughs> because it's gonna be important later. And you don't mm. have that opportunity to do that in something like Augie. So it is that much more important to make sure that what your decisions are from the writing and the art side are that much stronger um, because, you know, you do want to make sure that everything that you have in the panel on the page is relevant and important so that 
the reader can really focus on what they need to know for that particular story. So the thing that I love about Dean stuff is that it's not really overpopulated with a ton of just random images. It really is a very clean panel with just what's important for the story. You know, even like here where you're in a bathtub, right? You could have a million other sink, toilet, various, you know, different kind of what, but the fact that it's so clean and, and the fact that the images are just, this is what's important for the particular story is what I think really sells it. It, it was exactly, it's exactly what you're saying. It, it It's not any absence of important details. It's just, they don't, there's no, there's no extra clutter. Mm. Right. Mm. Absolutely. This is yeah, great stuff. It's gorgeous stuff, man. It really is. It's cool. You know, and, it, and <laughs> I'm like going through this and I'm like laughing in my head because I can't really laugh out loud. Otherwise, I'll be interrupting you guys talking. But <laughs> like it really, truly, I'm telling you, it plays like in, like animation in your head. Like I'm just going through and just like and that's you know, also I'm a scrolling through to show everyone. Yeah. yeah. That's a testament also to obviously the original Augie and the Cockroaches cartoon that they have developed such a style that is so... Uh, easy to come in as writers who haven't written for the series um, and be able to, you know, jump right in. Um, and I was just going to say one thing for those that are watching, the great thing about the Kickstarter is that it is, as you mentioned, already fully funded. So there's no, I know for a lot of people always, you know, should I do a Kickstarter or not? If it might not go, it might not be fulfilled. Uh, the great thing is that it's already funded. So you know, for those that are, are looking to join the Kickstarter, they know that whatever they're uh, putting towards it is going to go to the actual production of the book and that they will be getting a product in the end. Mm -hmm. Now, do your scripts and the artwork and stuff, do that does that have to be approved by the, you know, the production of the show or the creator of the show? Uh, Scott Back, he might be able to answer that best, yeah. He's, he's our, uh, our general on that, him and Jim. Right, absolutely. Everything we do, every script, every piece of art goes through uh, the folks over at Xylem with Augie, and, and it's all approved before it goes into print. Uh, we want to we wanna make sure that we're, we're staying true to their vision of the product and, and the license, and because obviously this, this uh, they're letting us play again. And like I said with JC, with... Uh, Stargate Atlantis, they're letting us play in their sandbox. So we want to make sure that uh, we're uh, staying true to the characters. Yeah. Well, what kind of reaction? Really kind of, oh, sorry. Now, go ahead. No, I was just saying it definitely does. You know, what what kind of reactions have they had, Scott? Have they liked what you guys have been doing? Absolutely. Yeah, I, we've had we've had a great relationship with them so far. Uh, you know, these are all new Augie stories. Uh, uh, they've, they've been making the cartoons for a, what 20 years now so the, there's there's uh, how many seasons of the cartoons that have been out there and and uh but as far as comic book form you know there was nothing there prior to what we've done with american mythology yeah so these are all new stories so uh yeah it's exciting you know as far as fans of augie and the cockroaches go uh, this is previously unseen material for them so yeah it's exciting stuff Phenomenal. Very cool. Well, I, I'm I'm blown away by it, and you know I had seen the uh, the first issue, uh, but this is just like looks consistently great, and mm -hmm. you guys clearly have uh, a lot of energy for the stories, and it's really cool to see uh, people discovering this, and we know that with Kickstarter even more can. Uh, Scott, while you were while you were gone, uh, Paul Jenkins <laughs> back there. Oh, fantastic. And, he, and he's sharing it on his social media. How about that? That's yeah, pretty it's up on uh, cool. Twitter. I, I, just, I saw the post That's and everything amazing. come up on Twitter, which is great. Um, Thank you. And, and what we're going to do, too, is we're going to keep pushing it through our channels, through our social, you know, through uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. And we'll continue to help push this, uh, you know, because, you know, we're, uh, we're a fan of you guys, what you're doing, um, you know. We're a fan of Augie. We're also a fan of the other books and stuff you guys have out there and, and TV shows that you've worked on, Jordan. So, I mean, we're Thank just going to continue help supporting uh, you guys as best we can. Uh, now, if you don't mind me asking, you know, besides uh, Augie and stuff, uh, maybe we can go around real quick. And uh, can you guys talk about any other projects or anything? Or do you have anything you guys want to plug? 
Scott, you, you want to kick us? Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't want to jump out first, but yeah, definitely, always. Uh, like I said uh, a little bit earlier, uh, we'll, next year will be the fifth uh, anniversary for American Mythology Comics, which you know I've been fortunate enough to be working with uh, the same as JC since the ground floor of the whole project began. And it's it's been a wild and wonderful ride as, as we've gotten to this point. Uh, for the fifth year, we're planning a lot of great things with American Mythology Comic Books, starting with uh, the Three Stooges, which will be back in early January and uh, 2021 with some new stories uh, with a nice commemorative issue celebrating not only uh, the length, the five years for the Stooges, but the fifth year anniversary for American mythology. Uh, so we'll be working on that. We're already working on the project. Uh, I'm working on it. Jordan's working on it also. Um, there, there's going to be a, a lot of other great books coming out through the early part of 2021 to help celebrate uh, that five-year mark for American mythology to be on the lookout for. Uh, on a personal level, uh, the, the Three Stooges uh, uh, meets Laurel and Hardy. I mean, that, that's still fairly fresh out on the shelf, so I'd appreciate it if you have a chance to take a look at that. Uh, once again, that was, that was a project very near and dear to me that I enjoyed completing. Um, hopefully, we're going to have a couple more original books coming out with American mythology, mythology this year. I know I have a couple projects that that, like everyone here, hopes to see the light of day in 2021. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, as far as some of my novels, uh, <laughs> Legend Gary, if you could visit my website at shcheck.com, uh, that just came out uh, within the last six months. And uh, my horror novel, thank you, uh, Monkey Farm <laughs> out with Necro Publications, Bedlam Press, uh, just came out late last year. Uh, and it's been doing really well. And uh, it's a great science fiction horror mix. Uh, uh, I think there's some really fun elements to the whole story. Uh, it's, it's great. Kind of, yeah, everyone should check that out. It's really fun. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, there, there's there's some fun things to it. I, I had a good time writing it. I I, I would, uh, if you get a chance, uh, check it out. All right. And I'll get one else. <laughs> or, or I'll mysteriously vanish again, like I did the last. <laughs> time. You'll notice it was right after Dean said I wrote a perfect script, and then after I did, my no I did twice, you're like so. George Costanza. You got to go out on the high note. Good night, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Jordan, anything uh, you can talk about they have going on? Yeah, so we've got uh, coming out uh, just in time for the holidays. I think we've all done some work on it uh, here. The new Laurel and Hardy Christmas issue, which was super fun to be a part of. Um, so you can check that out from American Mythology. And as Scott mentioned, obviously, the Three Stooges. So that was like a lifelong dream fulfilled to get to do a story for uh, for them. Uh, I know it's for me growing up, right? It's as, as a Jewish kid in Jersey, it's like you're either going to be playing for the Yankees or you want to work for, with or for the Three Stooges. So, you know, um, didn't wasn't going to be a second baseman uh, for the Yankees. So I'm glad that I was able to do one of the dreams. Um, so we've got that coming out. Um, yeah, and then just check out my Twitter. It's my handle right there on, on the screen at Jordan Gersh. I feel like that's the best place to get all the latest news on kind of all the animation uh, projects that I'm working on. We've got some stuff coming out with HBO Max and, and a new show that will be announced soon with Nickelodeon. Um, so I'm excited to uh, to tease that without being able to say any more, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I have uh, is actually my first kids picture book um, called Ignore the Trolls which uh, came out with PAL Kids, which is a, an imprint of Penguin Random House. Um, and that takes a, a funny fairy tale look at a very serious topic that is uh, internet trolling. Um, wow. So you can find Great. that. Yeah. So trying to taking the literal sense of a troll and, and, and manifesting that into a little green guy that, uh, that kind of just annoys the, the shit out of you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and learning and teaching kids, especially and listen, especially in the age that we're in with uh, with coronavirus and everything and being more and more in tune with technology and spending more and more time on on social media and and all of your devices. Uh, you know, it's a book that kind of shows kids how to uh, how to deal with uh, Internet trolls, which I'm sure all of us are very familiar with at some point or another. 
Definitely. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to buy a few copies of the book to uh, send to some people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I've done some uh, variant covers for both the Laurel and Hardy meets the Three Stooges, which I was wrapped about, and the uh, Laurel and Hardy uh, Christmas special was really nice. So um, if you want some specific Dean Rankin covers, you can get those. Um, I've got something else I can't talk about as well, which is a pain, um, but I, I'll, I'll plug this. This is the uh, book series that I'm working on for Scholastic. Yeah. So I don't think it's out in the States. I think you'd need to order it online. So it's called Timmy the Ticked Off Pony and the Poo of Excitement and okay. Illustrated Book. It's written by uh, Magda Zabanski, who is a very well-known Australian comedian actor, but I don't know if you would know her in the States. She's worked on things like uh, Kath and Kim and um, Babe which is that pig movie. So yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal here because I'm like, yeah, we recently had a stamp series out of Australian comedians and she was one of them. One of them. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of big. So I'm working on the third book as well as um, inking the uh, next issue of Oggy that I'm working on as well. Very nice. Cool. Very cool. Mm. And, and for everyone out there that wants to discover, uh, you know, more about American mythology and uh, all the books and different series they have, you know, I definitely recommend that you head on over to www.americanmythology.net backslash shop and uh, check out everything. You've got your whole menu here. You can scroll through. Um, you know, if you're a Casper fan, I mean, they've got a bunch of awesome IPs, characters and things that, you know, you may not even realize are, are in print still now. Look and, at uh, that, right at the creators. bottom of the screen, McCandless and Company. Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, head on over and uh, check that out. And uh, there's the Laurel and Hardy books. It's so cool, man. I, I love this stuff. This is great, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming on. And even before we go to uh, uh, Jeff, do you have anything uh, going on? Why, Niall? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, next Wednesday, September 2nd. Much to my surprise, I must confess, the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide number 50, our 50th anniversary issue. We have uh, a Spawn and Spider-Man cover by Todd McFarlane. First time Todd drew Spa uh, Spidey uh, professionally in 27 years. And uh, I'm pretty happy about that. And I can tell you, based on the reorders, even before it comes out, some other people are happy about it, too. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Winona Earp, uh, the great sci-fi series, but also originally a graphic novel series mm -hmm. uh, by Bo Smith and Chris Evan Hughes, who did the cover, which is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Got a really great design. I almost never have an outside designer work on a book, but we really wanted to get this and advertised in our last price guide. And so uh, Don Guzzo of a and I think she kicked ass on it too. Uh, we also have the Valiant Heroes, Bloodshot, Livewire, and Exo, uh, done by John K. Snyder III, uh, who is our, in the history of the Price Guide, strangely enough, our most prolific cover artist. And uh, I just I just love this piece, so I, I'm excited to have that. Uh, and then we've got, for 11 years now, we've done a benefit cover uh, that we provide to the Hero Initiative at no cost to them. And this That's one awesome. is Kevin Nolan's uh, reinterpretation wow. of Marvel feature number one, the origin wow. and first appearance of the, the Defenders. That's incredible. And, it, it, you know, isn't that a perfect adjective for the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it is. It is just beautiful. I When I saw the pencils for this come in, I almost didn't want to have it colored because it was already so great. Uh, it was really just wonderful. So we're really tickled with that. That is available only from the Hero Initiative and uh, a limited number of Hero supporting stores. All of the money for it goes to the Hero Initiative. And uh, we've been able to raise a good a good bit of money for them over the years. With The edition size is 500 uh, and they're only hardcover. And they, like I said, Hero and their store, uh, which is part of the Graham Crackers store, uh, is on, the, the only ways to get them. Uh, particularly this year, since there's no San Diego convention where we usually sold a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, uh, I have a feeling that that one's going to go pretty quick too. We have one last edition, 
which is the big, big Overstreet comic book price guide. Uh, and this one is an the cover is an homage to the first price guide 50 years ago. And uh, this exists because people like me need large print. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, I, I, I got a little bit of play in picking out a few logos. I'm a, I'm a huge Atlas Seaboard fan, huge EC fan, original Valiant, uh, uh, Boom, uh, Eclipse, and uh, Milestone. Uh, and so they were, those were largely not, EC was on the first one. But the rest of them, uh, it's a pretty new mix, and uh, so it all—they all come out Wednesday, and I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Then you guys also Maybe. have a, a free comic book day. Cover, we did right? have a free comic book day. Our free, you know, they've turned it into free comic book summer, summer because of Corona, because we don't want yeah. large groups of people aggregating the stores. But our pal yeah. Billy Tucci mm -hmm. uh, continued our series of absurd crossovers <laughs> that, will, that do not that do not happen in the comic last year. We had she and dinosaurs for hire, and this year it's Yosagi Yojimbo and Painkiller Jane. And uh, I love I, the you know, carrot. <laughs> you know, love the carrot in her waist. Billy added that without us asking, and uh, uh, the first two word balloons were mine. And Mark Huseman, our creative director, came up with the last one, and I just couldn't stop laughing. So you know, it went with that. And, I feel like uh, Jimmy may have said to put that carrot there. You know, <laughs> honestly, I think it was Billy. But uh, regardless, uh, uh, I think that, it, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's out there now. So our free comic book day part of free comic book summer was mm -hmm. last Wednesday. So a lot of stores can get that. If you happen to shop on Long Island, uh, both Best Comics and the Comic Book Depot, all of their subscribers, again, because we couldn't do signings, all of their subscribers got signed copies. So if you had a subscription there, I stopped by and dropped them off copies and signed every one of them because they couldn't stop me. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and other than that, can. hey, I do, um, I do have a uh, comment here. Uh, Lee Ditsworth asked a question that I think Scott could probably answer, but I don't know the answer to it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to get to that. Yeah. The um, hang on one second here. Sorry, gentlemen. Come on, come on. Here we go. Does the at least it's worth, does the graphic novel collect the uh, issues one through three or are those separate runs? No, it's the graphic novel collects the first three issues. Absolutely. And then we also have a new issue uh, for the New Year's, uh, the Augie New Year's issue for 2021, uh, i.e. Good Riddance 2020. So. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Amen and yeah. hallelujah, brother. Right. And then uh, TJ says, uh, holy cow at JC Vaughn. How the heck is Gene Gonzalez doing? Dude, I haven't talked to Gene in quite a while. He was uh, traveling extensively, uh, and, and I haven't talked to him. But, boy, is he one of the greatest guys in comics and one of the most talented guys that I ever worked with. Just, just mm -hmm. phenomenal. Awesome. Well, guys, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight on Pop XP. It's been fantastic talking with you, looking at your book, seeing how you take that physical comedy and just relay it perfectly into some fluid motion that just plays in your head like true live animation. And uh, again, everyone, I really strongly urge you to check out Augie and the Cockroaches uh, live on Kickstarter right now. Oh, got another backer. So they're at 34. Perfect. <clears throat> excuse me so check it out you know if you can back it back it this is a great all age uh book for your kids or even and, and listen it's a it's a pandemic a lot of people are out of work if you can't if you can't back it yeah. everybody gets that but share it around this stuff makes a real difference for these projects and while you're at it click on our show and ring the, and the bell so you get alerted when we have new episodes Exactly. And uh, also tomorrow night, everyone, uh, if you're available at nine o'clock, we're starting a first series of panels with a century of horror. We're going to be starting with roughly about 12 films uh, ranging from 1896, which is uh, The Haunted Cast, which was the very first horror film, all the way up to The Fall of the House of Usher. So uh, check it out and join us tomorrow night for a live panel. We'll be showing clips, images, discussing uh, the first 30 years, basically, of a horror film. So that should definitely be interesting. That'll be phenomenal. Very cool. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I love yeah. sound films. I don't know how many people do, but I do. <laughs> I go more All for, right. I, I, it's really funny. I go more for the comedy 
because Buster Keaton, Buster Keaton is gold. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you love silent films and comedy, you got Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin. I mean, I feel like most people's first exposure, like for me, was Charlie Chaplin. Of course. And, uh, you know, then from there, I branched off. Even, you know, with like Laurel and Hardy and stuff they were doing before they actually became Laurel and Hardy. I mean, right. the, the, all the, the vaudeville stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the vaudeville yeah. stuff. The, the, the physical White comedy then is unbelievable. And how they use perspective and paintings and things to make you really believe you know, some of the stuff, I mean, it's absolute genius. And I have to say, before we sign off, it's funny, right? So we had to to do some research for tomorrow night's show, right? Because um, I, I know very little when it comes to silent film horror. I'm like you, JC. I'm really into the comedy of it, you know? But I'm going through some of these films, and I'm like, they wouldn't allow this. They yeah. wouldn't allow this stuff today. Yeah. And Haxon, witchcraft through out the ages go on youtube everyone look it up watch it someone made a trailer watch the trailer it is unbelievable it's it's creepy as all hell and it's basically you're in hell um <laughs> but i mean the stuff they're doing you can't i don't think you can actually get away with that today in film because back then it was really like almost like an interpretive art you know right. versus like the entertainment so i think they were you know they were able to get away with some of that stuff and they didn't have the censorship but i mean it's it's a pure genius don't get me wrong it's pure genius but you want to talk about horror and creepy these silent films are creepier than most things you see today insane insane so join thank us you. tomorrow night we'll have a great time all right everyone thank you so much uh, scott thanks for coming on george wow, that's fantastic you. dean uh incredible talent with your illustrating um hey if you guys ever have things coming up you want to come up on the show plug something that you're working on a novel a show anything like that please reach out to me once you're on the show you're part of the pop xp family you're always welcome on the show and we even open up invites if you know you happen to see a promo where maybe we have a guest who's a friend of yours or someone you've always wanted to talk to someone that's inspired you and hey you know what i'd love to join the show as a guest host Shoot us an email. We'd be happy to have any of you guys on. Well, thank you for the invite. Want. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. All and, right, and, everyone. And, and you realize you realize that as of now, Scott has been on the show three times. Yeah, so, Scott. You might earn your silk jacket. I was going to wow. ask. Yeah. A smoking jacket. <laughs> well, but, smoking jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, true. Uh, there you go. All right, everyone. Thank you so much again. Everyone night, have a everybody. great night. Stay safe. And we will see you tomorrow night at 9 for a Century of Horror Part 1 panel. Cheers. Hey, Thank everyone. You. Thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.